You can start and stop your flash timelines using ActionScript. One way is to use flash buttons. A simple click on a flash button and we can trigger some ActionScript. To do this we need to learn about a flash template for using with buttons and we'll copy and paste that flash template and learn how to make the proper modifications. Here we have the starting and completed example. The one on the left is the starting one, the one on the right is the one we're completing. And on that one we have some flash buttons. These are flash symbols and we can stop and start the animation by clicking on these buttons. So let's get started. We'll close these two examples and we'll open up our starting file. And we'll save it under another name. I'll just call mine practice. And let's examine what we have in this movie. First we'll look at the library. In the library we have two flash movie clips, one called Red Circle, one called Red Square. Let's take a look at each one. We'll open up Red Circle and inside of it we simply have a shape. It's just one layer, one keyframe, no animation. Let's open up Red Square and again it's the same arrangement, one shape, one layer, one keyframe. Let's go take a look at scene one. On scene one, let's hide some things and we'll just look at the lower layer, uh, R2L oval, and what we have on that is a short animation. And we'll select the object that's part of the motion tween, actually the motion tween, look at the properties, and we can see that's an instance of the red circle symbol in the library, the movie clip. Let's hide that one and unhide and unlock this first one and we'll click on the object that's on the stage and also look at the properties and we can see that's an instance of red square and again this is just a simple motion tween. So let's just quickly look at the finished movie so we'll do control test movie and this is what we saw when we got started. Let's close this now and what we want to do is add a layer for our button controls. So we'll come down here to this first layer on our timeline and we'll click the insert layer icon and we'll click in here and give it a name. We'll just simply call it controls. And I'm going to use some pre-made buttons and if we come up to window common libraries on our main menu and choose buttons and we'll get a window that opens up that looks like it's called Buttons Flaw. It's actually a Flash movie that was created and put in a special folder inside of your Flash installation folders. And those Flash movies that are put there will come up in the window menu choice, Common Libraries. And so we will only see the libraries in these and we're going to go to Classic Buttons. And rather than make the buttons from scratch, we really want to just learn how to do action scripts. So we're going to use some pre-made ones under classic buttons. Open that node. And uh, we want to open up the circle buttons node. And down towards the bottom you'll see a play button and a stop button. And what we'll do is we'll drag those onto the stage. One last click to make sure we're putting them in the right place. So I'll click on this blank keyframe for controls and I'll drag the play button onto the stage and then the stop button onto the stage and we'll close this window we don't need it any longer and we can see that we have these two objects on our stage if we take a quick look at the library in the library you'll see you have two new add two new added items in here one's a play button one's a stop button on stage we can just arrange these in a way that would please us we'll just sort of center them on the same horizontal plane like that. Now to make our buttons work in ActionScript we need to assign them instance names. So if we select one of them, we have the play button selected, and go to its properties, the instance properties, we have a place to put in a name for that instance of the symbol in the library. So we're going to call this play underscore button. So that's the name that it carries as this instance. Remember the library is there's one in the library we could use it many times in our movie and each time we use it in the movie if we want to have action script refer to this particular instance we give it a name. Let's do the same with the stop button. Select it and in its properties window we'll call this stop underscore button.
Okay, next add a layer for our action script. So we'll select this controls layer and we'll use the insert new layer icon and we will name this action script. And our actions will have to go, our action script will actually have to go on the layer or keyframe that will contain the objects that it's going to respond to. And uh, the action script is quite lengthy to type in, so what we do is we use copy and paste. And I have a prepared file for that, so we do file open. And we want to open up this file called button click action script template.as. And what that is is a script only flash document. And the only thing that's in it is, uh, is code. And so we can see this example here. Basically, uh, we'll learn to change the button instance name in three places and select amongst all these commented code lines. So the double slash means comment and so we'll pick the play and the stop one in our two buttons and let's select the entire code all the way up here. We don't need the first comment. If you right mouse click and choose copy go back to your practice movie and select the first keyframe on the actions layer. Right mouse click choose actions and just paste into that window. Right mouse click, choose paste. Make sure your script assist button is up. Now what we'll do is we'll just scroll up here so we can see the beginning part. I'm going to close the side panels on the left and so you can see everything. You see a line number missing. I have the line numbers uh, will show a gap. That's because I've turned on the word wrap for my script window. So this way if you see a blank here that means it's just a continuation of the previous line. And what we want to do is change the word button instance name in three places to play underscore button. And that's the name we gave to our play button on the stage. I'm going to copy it so I don't have to type it all the time. And there's two more places, or a total of three. This way we don't have to understand programming and we can get it quite a bit done. Now all these commented lines in between the two curly braces are choices that we could have in responding to a mouse click that are basic actions that everybody should know how to do. The first group has to do with c controlling the timeline that the button is on. Uh, this one here is uh, for navigating outside of the Flash movie to another website or web page. And this one's for controlling a movie clip that's on the timeline. So we'll explore those a little later on. We're going to remove everything except the stop and play one. Alright, and then this way, these are the two actions that we need. So for the play button, we need the play one. So I'm going to remove the comment and notes in front of it, and that's our action when the play button's mouse click event is, occurs. We copy these entire lines and then paste them once more. You can put a couple extra spaces in between. The spaces between line are optional for readability. And what we'll do is we'll change the play button uh, to say stop button and again we have to do this in three places so that's the first I'll right mouse click and copy that and go to the second one and paste and go to the third one and paste and we don't want the play action here so we can just get rid of it completely but we do want the stop action so basically this says the play button when it hears the mouse click event run this code that's in this block of curly braces and we don't need to understand all the programming about it, but if you want to become a programmer, certainly you would. Let's test the movie. And I'll just use uh, Control Test Movie. And we can see we have our buttons on here, and they already have a rollover effect. That's part of making the buttons, nothing to do with the action script we wrote. And the stop button stops the timeline, and the play button restarts it at the position it stops. And that's what the play action does do. And I'll just start it again and so we can see it working. Oh, so save your movie. Okay, there's a lot more we could do with action script and buttons using the same example. Uh, in all cases you want to work from a template so that it's easy for you just simply to copy the code and make the changes where necessary.